Hey, what's going on? This is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about vendor communication and how important it is. Hey, what's going on? My name is Alex Ramey with DJ Cut Entertainment, and I own a DJ company and a video company. So I have a very interesting perspective on this topic. So what I'm going to read you is from my uh, video group that I'm part of on Facebook. So I have a very interesting perspective because I have a DJ company, so I understand the DJ side, and I also own a video company, so I understand the video side. So we're going to talk about this specific case and a couple other things that happen and how to avoid uh, these kind of situations. So uh, this girl says, when setting up audio for the speeches via the DJ, are we, are they supposed to know which cord to plug into? What inputs and outputs on their equipment? There appears to be running an issue for me. The first wedding I ever did was so simple and easy. Worked like a dream. That was probably a professional. Each one since has been a pain in the ass. Either the DJ's 100% clueless, doesn't have the right setup according to them, or I can't get any xlr she said d40x to work or pick up sound i don't get it so i'm gonna break this down in a, a couple different things let's just start with um rule number one and what i do i usually like to set up a site walkthrough with all the different vendors that are going to be there whether that be the photographer uh, the florist, the, you know, having the bride and groom there, just doing a big walkthrough with the videographer, any vendors that are going to play a crucial role in having communication with one another. And what this does is just open that open line of communication so everybody can ask what needs to be said. There are plenty of weddings that we do where we're not the videographer and we're just doing DJ. So I get it from both aspects. I get a little weary, like she's saying, probably most DJs, if you don't reach out to us beforehand, let us know what you're doing and what's going on, and then we can prepare for that specific uh, situation. So I'm a little touchy when People, I get to a wedding, I'm doing my setup, and then I have a videographer or company start messing with my equipment and just plugging into, into stuff. Um, so it's really good to either do that site walkthrough or at least reach out to them uh, via email or a phone call before the wedding so you know exactly what you need. And I notice in a lot of these forms, when this problem, when this question comes up, it's usually because you don't have communication with that vendor and it's a surprise on their day. Nobody likes surprises on the wedding day and go, oh, I'm the videographer here. I'm hooking up. Sometimes DJs in different setups, they have to adjust and adapt different situations to make that work for that videographer. And I know this even as a DJ company. It is not the DJ's job to provide you sound for audio. Is it nice? Yes, it is very nice if you can get a live feed from the DJ. Even in my company, I don't depend on my DJ company to supply me sound for audio. The audio that I get from the DJ's board is always my backup source. I usually try to have one, two, and sometimes three different sources of audio. So what we have here and what she was talking about uh in her post is this little recorder. And this is usually what we put on the bride, the groom, anybody speaking for the speeches and the ceremony. Having this right here hooked up on the bride and the groom or who's ever speaking eliminates the DJ. And so it just takes the DJ portion out of uh, the conversation by having this recorder. Um, I've read in posts before where they will say that this recorder uh, causes interference with um, the microphones, and that's just simply not true. Uh, these don't transmit any kind of radio signal, so some DJs will say, hey, I don't want you hooking it up because of the radio signal. Show them this video because it, it will not interfere with their sound at all uh, whatsoever.
So if we don't have the opportunity to do a site walkthrough with all the vendors beforehand, when I get to the wedding, one of the very first things I do is I start going around and introducing myself uh, to everybody to ease that tension, find out you know, what different vendors I'm going to be working with and how I can help them or what they need from me. Because once the wedding starts, everything is on me and I need to make sure that they're ready before I start executing some things. I've also read in my forum before where they will be off eating their dinner and then the DJ will announce the speeches. They'll start the speeches where the photographer and videographer are off sitting down eating and then they miss the speeches. So I make sure to communicate, hey guys, this is the time that I'm going to do speeches. I will make sure to grab you and make sure that you guys are ready before I start any of the important events. So I can't stress this enough. It is super important to make sure that you establish that open line of communication beforehand. Uh, I've seen problems with videographers and photographers, you know, overstepping each other and getting each other's way. And I've just found over the years that the more communication that you have, let each other know what you need. And it's a team working together and, you know, you'll have a more successful event. Um, so this is really important to, I can't stress this enough, open that line of communication. It's not going to be a dream team every time, but it helps ease the tension and find out how you guys can work together. Because the end of the day, you guys are both working for the bride and the groom. And so that open line of communication is really going to help in the future. Now, one of the biggest things is working with a venue that has a preferred vendors list. So usually you can find your catering, DJ, photographers, entertainment, anything you need for your wedding through their preferred vendor list. And the major benefit is this, is if they're on that preferred list, there's a really good chance that they've worked together before. That's why they're on that preferred list. And the open line of communication is already established. Everybody knows what they already need. And most likely you're getting professionals that work together. They know what they're doing and we can avoid a lot of these different problems. Now, when it comes to getting audio from the DJ, your audio quality is only gonna be as good as the DJ's microphones are. So with my particular company, we have thousand dollar microphones. So that's one that's going on the bride, the groom, the officiant, and we have two for speeches. Most DJs usually get the lower end microphones and that's about a $300 microphones. And that's when you have the speeches or the ceremony and you'll hear the mics cut in and out. Now, when you have the higher end microphones, you usually don't have this problem. And if you're relying on the DJ sound for uh, the speeches and the ceremony, you might have some problems with your audio cutting in and out. The easiest solution around this is just bring your own microphones, hook them on the bride and groom directly, and you'll have a much better sound. Now, when it comes to lapel mics, that's going to pick up a lot of the ambient sound around the room, and you're going to be a lot better using these uh, lavalier mics, and you're going to get a better audio quality. Um, when it comes to the speeches, the closer that microphone is to their voice, the better it's going to sound. So if you have the person holding the microphone and it's way down, you know, instead of being up here, it's way down here, the audio quality is going to sound a lot different. The best way to control this is by putting that lavalier mic um, on their coat or somewhere on their dress. Um, it's a little cumbersome to get it on there um, sometimes, but you're going to have a lot better sounding quality audio and you don't have to rely on the DJ. When we do our particular weddings, we'll put one of these on the speaker. We will take a recorder and we will hook it onto the actual microphone and then we have the audio for the actual microphone going through the DJ's board. So if one goes out, we have a couple backups, but I never rely on our DJs to provide us good audio for our videos. To me, I think that's unprofessional and it's just an added element that adds uh, more stress on the wedding day. Thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. If you guys have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys.